with a loving understanding of this imperfect faith. Our God heals, but he heals, he doesn't heal everyone all the time. Someone asked me once, you know, when you pray for someone and if they're not healed, does that shake your faith? And my response was after walking with God as long as I have, after serving God for as long as I have, it doesn't shake my faith because our faith, my faith, isn't based on what God does. My faith is based on who God is. Our faith isn't based on what God does in the immediate moment, right, to a specific request. Oftentimes, God will do exactly what we're asking God to do, but God shows up and God shows off. And other times, in ways that I may not understand, God is like, well, I'm not going to prove myself right now. Or maybe it's, I actually have something that's higher than your thoughts, different than your ability to understand. And even though it may hurt right now, even though it may grieve me or you right now, even though it, we may question the goodness of God, we still trust the goodness of God. Because our faith is not based on what God does in the moment. Our faith is based on what God did for us on the cross. Get that? It doesn't, it doesn't get any better than that. A God who becomes one of us and sends his son, his son to shed his blood that our sins would be forgiven. Our faith isn't based on seeing the results to a miracle. Our faith is based on a character, on the character and the goodness of God who sacrificed his son. Now, I know this is going to mess up some people's theology. I know it. Uh, and some people are going to disagree with me on this. But I am passionate about this. We need to understand that when God sent Jesus, the highest purpose for Jesus' coming was not to heal our bodies, but to save our souls. The highest purpose. I'm not saying that God doesn't heal our bodies. We know that God does but, but and can. But the highest purpose Jesus says, I have come that they would have life and life more abundantly. I have come to seek and save the lost. I didn't come for the righteous. I came for the sinners. I came to give my life as a ransom. And you see it in Mark 2. I, I love this story. There are four men who are bringing their paralyzed friend to Jesus. And I imagine the leader of the group is named Bubba. And so Bubba and his three buddies, they're looking to get their friend to see Jesus. And there was nothing that was going to get in their way. And so they drag their, their old friend, their, their, you know, who can't walk, who knows how far. Maybe they were carrying him and then, and then he got so heavy they start dragging him. Um, and they, they take him to this Bible study that they heard Jesus was, was you know, going to be at. And so uh, there's so many people in the house that they can't get in. But Bubba and his friends were so determined, you know. So what do they do? Bubba says, okay, boys, let's go up to the roof. And so up to the roof they go, and they, they dig out an opening, right? And then they lower their friend on a mat down to Jesus, right? So... I don't know exactly how did it, how they did it. You know, Bubba was in charge. But Mark chapter 2, verse 25 says this. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. The first thing Jesus does is he forgives his sins. Before he heals his body, which he does, right? First, he forgave. He forgave his sins. Because when Jesus came, his highest calling wasn't to heal our bodies. It was to save our souls. Now, here's a little spoiler. If God heals you of cancer, guess what? I hate to, to break this to you, but um, you're still going to die right? Technically, if the rapture comes back you, you, and Jesus comes back and you, you'll fly away, but Jesus, if Jesus doesn't come back, um, you're, you're going to die, right? Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Next time Jesus, Lazarus died, it was on his own. You get it, right? We're still going to die because his highest purpose isn't what happens to our bodies, you know, 70, 80, 90 years on earth. 
But hear this, but hear this, your highest purpose, your highest purpose is that your life would glorify God. I'm gonna say it again, because this is really important. Your highest purpose, your highest purpose is that your life would glorify God. So when I pray with every bit of faith that I have, sometimes it's great and sometimes it's a mustard seed. But I am bringing my imperfect faith before him. I believe God can. And I believe God will. And even if God doesn't do what I think God should, I still believe because my faith isn't based on what God does or doesn't do. My faith, our faith is based on who God is. Amen, 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 and amen. Okay, so we're praying. Let's pray. Let's pray for miracles today. Let's let's pray long. Let's pray hard. We know uh, that when two or more or lots of us gathered online pray together in Jesus' name, that Jesus is in the midst of it. God is in the midst of it, and so um, let's bring it to let's bring it to God. Let's let's pray for miracles. Shall we do that? Would you join me as we pray, Heavenly Father? We come to you right now among a cloud of uncertainty. Um, COVID-19 has spread among your people and has scaled mountains, crossed borders, entered countries, traversed oceans, male and female, young and old. It has entered homes and schools and governments and hospitals and sporting clubs and, and more. As a people united, we cry out. Do not be far from us, God. Come quickly to help us. For those who are currently afflicted by this virus, we ask for a miracle. May lungs be restored to full health, headaches dissolved, body aches disbanded. For anyone battling symptoms, God, bring restoration and health. For those who are battling far worse, cancer, tumors, strokes, may you lay your healing hand upon them, Jesus. We lift up to you the medical professionals across our country and around the world. May you bless their gifted hands. For GPs, doctors, surgeons, nurses, and specialists, may you give them insight to treat those afflicted effectively. Sustain their efforts with an enduring energy. May they spread, may the spread of this virus not overwhelm our medical facilities, Lord God. For the margins of our society, we pray for protection upon them. Shelter the elderly and vulnerable from this sickness under your wings. May it not cross the threshold of their homes. For those who have nowhere to lay their head, may you not only protect them, but whisper to the hearts of those right now who have the resources to give them shelter. For the single moms and the single dads who can't spare time off for their kids, surround, surround them with friends and relatives who are able to care for their children during this time. For those worried about finances during this time, Business owners, Lord, people concerned for their livelihood, may you financially provide for them. For our world leaders during this time, we ask that you would generously, generously pour out your wisdom upon them, God. May you help them to govern your people safely during this unsure time. For those who have felt the rise in stress, depression, and anxiety during this time, or for those who have been battling with this for some time, we ask for a respite, for a reprieve. May their hearts not be troubled. May they be free in their minds like the birds of the sky who have no worries. Fill their minds with everything true, noble, lovely, pure, and praiseworthy. We are nothing without you, God. You are the masterful author and creator of everything we have, everything seen and unseen. 
Jesus, may we be inspired by your generous sacrifice, the sacrifice you made on the cross for all of us. May the spirit of our selfishness no longer find a home in the hearts of people around the world. In this time, do a miracle. May generosity flourish among neighbors and strangers, ensuring we all have enough starting right now, right here in Ontario, in our little town in Scarborough in, in Pickering, and spreading far quicker and wider than this virus ever will. We ask all of this in your precious, precious name. Oh, miracle working God. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, my friends. Uh, we're going to continue to do this online for as long as we, we can and, and will. And uh, God bless you. Um, look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless you.